Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the program. This yes. is the shock and awe broadcast of Gabriel Heyman's Ministries. It is Sunday. Can you believe it? It is September the 3rd, mm -hmm. 2023, and we are so excited that you can join us. Yes. We are going to have such a fantastic and amazing time <laughs> in the presence of the Lord today and by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Let's welcome the Lord. Heavenly yes. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we welcome the third person of God who is on the earth, who lives in our spirit since we are born again, who is the omnipotent and the omnipresent person of the Godhead. Father yes. sits on his throne. Mm -hmm. Jesus sits on his throne. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit exhibits omnipresence. Yes. He is everywhere. But we ask for your manifest presence, not just your Ooh. omnipresence. Yes, Lord. Ooh. Because your omnipresence is everywhere. Wherever there is life and creation, you are there, Holy Spirit. <laughs> we ask for your manifest presence. And we ask mm. for you to manifest mm. the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ Ooh, yes. that is entrusted to us. Yes. And everything that before time mm. was determined to be ministered today and administer to God's people. That is what we ask you, precious Holy Spirit, to do yes, in the Lord. name of Jesus, to the glory of the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And welcome. Praise Amen. the Lord. We are so excited. Praise God. Yes, Have we my are. precious wife, Apostle Shelley, on the program with me here. We are blessed. God has called us and our team to represent yes. the last day apostolic and prophetic ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. I tell you, it's just yesterday and this morning, it's like the Lord's talking all the time, just talking, 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 such amazing, wonderful things that you are going to see today. Today, there is going to be, I saw like a door open. I saw like a curtain fell open. I saw like light just come in. I saw Glory. darkness just dissipate Hallelujah. and disappear. Thank and you, it is going to be a life-changing day for you today to move <laughs> you forward in understanding simple knowledge and to see to see the plan of God yes. to see the plan of God to yeah. see what the Lord is all about to see what he is about to do oh my gosh yes it's supposed to be simple you know when we grow up as children mm -hmm. we want to know everything when we're two years old <laughs> and as Christians we are like that too mm -hmm. and there have been so many things that Christians have desired to know not for many years, for many generations. Look at the disciples on the Mount of Olives. Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Well, at least their thinking was correct. Mm -hmm. Because when you think about God, you always think about the future. Because He is the future. When you think about the future, you think about God's plans for the future. And so when you think about God and His plans for the future... You ask the question, is this the time? Is this the time? Is that the time? What is the time? Yes. How is the time? What is the time? Because everything God does in the earth is based upon time. Everything is progressively yes. unfolding is and manifesting through time. Yes. You didn't get here in one day. Right. You didn't arrive here. I didn't... <laughs> I didn't admit it, but I'm 66 years old. I did not arrive at 66 years of age in a day. The whole progression and unfolding of life and the plan of God with my life and your life likewise. So time is so important. And as time has progressed, we have come into the last generation. We've come into the last years of the last generation of the church on earth. And as we are now rapidly speeding towards the final outpouring, harvest and return of the Lord. Oh my God. There are so many more things now that we can come to know. There are so many more things now that we may come to know. There are many more things about the time, about the plan, about what's going to happen, where we are, what is about to take place, that are not just nice to have available, that we can know them, that we can have them. They are now becoming very important, becoming absolutely essential for us to know exactly everything about the time, where we are, what is happening, what is going to happen next, and what God is going to do. And Holy Spirit is going to run us through this today 
I tell you, so it's just amazing. What, what, what? It, it's going to change. It's going to make make it so simple, 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 straightforward for you, and bring you exactly up to date. Hallelujah! Praise oh, God. Yes. But I'm so happy to have my precious wife and my fellow apostle here with me. Praise mm -hmm. God, honey. Great to be here. Hallelujah! And um, oh, just so, so, so <laughs> excited. And we're also going to play a little bit of mu musical chairs. Now, let me say this, um, you know, before we really re get going here. Um, I want to quickly just, um, again, thank everybody who partook in what was an idea that the Lord brought to me. And if you watch the broadcast of July the 16th, and you see uh, what we were talking about and how the Lord used my wife as a sign to combine her birthday of 60 years with Isaiah 60. It's amazing. It which sounds was, like... My birthday was July 21st, a week later. Which was a week after that, July yeah. 21st. But yeah. it's amazing how God made a connection there yeah. that is a sign. Let me just yeah. say this quickly. God, over time, has used many things as signs. We're going to talk about some more signs today mm. and some of that. And sometimes they're personal signs. Sometimes they're signs for a generation, sometimes they're signs for the nation of Israel in the past, and now the signs that God is going to do and show in the sky are the signs for the peoples of the earth, because He's going to begin to call to attention the whole earth, because He's about to start His final last day plan of pouring out His fire and His yes. glory, raising up a whole new breed of the church, the glorious church, make the church glorious as Christ, Yes. in the yes. same measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, Ephesians 4, 13, and then He's going to turn us loose on the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the harvest will come in, yes. and the Lord will return. We are living in this amazing, amazing, amazing time. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So, also, so again, thank you to every one of you. Um, the Lord just said to me, just tell people what you're doing. We're going to take some money from the ministry and we're going to buy a gift and really bless her and the son. So watch July 16th to understand the sign, what that is about. And then, of course, that developed into us getting an understanding of what really is the last generation of the church, the final generation, 1 Peter 2, 9. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy people, a peculiar people. And so we began to understand that. So July 16th, what's the sign that God gave us about my wife, Apostle Shelley? And then July 23rd, we did not offer a broadcast. We were out of town. So the next broadcast is July 30, after July 16. Don't look for 23rd. It's not there. July 16, the sign about my wife. July 30, the sign about the final generation, the chosen generation, the generation of the glorious church. That was July the 30th. Yes. So, and so thank you to every one of you who sowed towards this gift for my wife. You. Um, you know, it's still open. We have not gone anywhere with that, and we will, and so on. Also, at the same time, thank you, thank you. We always want to thank our partners, our friends who pray for us, who stand with us, who walk with us. Yes. I'm saying this again. I'm <laughs> saying this in all humility. The call, the ministry that we carry is not in our hands. It's not in our flesh. It's not in our body. It's mm -hmm. not in our brain. It's not in our mind. It's not in our intellect. It's in our yes. eternal man, our yes. spirit man. Our spirit man. Our yes. Spirit man. That's where it is. So we're no better than anybody else. We don't know better. We are better. We're better than anybody else. But God has given us a very specific and a very specialized and a very uh, 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 one directional mm -hmm. type of uh, pointing ministry. To targeted. Very targeted. Very targeted yeah. towards what is going to happen now since we've come so close to the end. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so... Amazing things we want to talk about. Now, we do have agreement with the body of Christ in most of what we teach. We do have agreement with walking the spiritual life, live the life by faith. You have to walk and live with Holy Spirit because Jesus is at mm -hmm. the right end of the Father. That's right. You know, so that's where most Christians are missing it. Of course, most of the body of Christ do believe uh, in unison that we are in the last days now. Mm-hmm. That we are in the last generation, that the blossoming of the fig tree, the rebirth of Israel as a nation, was the sign of the fig tree that Jesus had predicted. It came to pass Friday, May 40, 1948. So that is the beginning of what we count 
as the beginning of the last generation. A generation, of course, 70 to 80 years. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And so in 2017, the last generation of the church turned 70 years old, became a full age. So there's the 70-year generation or the extension to 80, 70 to 80. Hallelujah. So I just wanted you to know these things and just a few basic things. Um, but thank you uh, to all our partners because here is a work that we, you, that, it, that we do through the Spirit of God that is unique. We do it not because we're better, because we're smarter, be anything, because this is what God has called us to do, is to show clearly the time, the season, the plan, everything that's happening, yes. and direct you right towards your point of, of, of contact for your, for your, point, uh, for your destiny. Amen. That is what we do, and we do yes. not know, unfortunately, of any other ministry. We, we do not say that it does not exist. We do not know of any other ministry anywhere on the face of the earth that is doing that. Showing you exactly the time, the signs of the time right now, what is happening, where we are, what is going to happen next. The absolute prophetic outline exactly to what is happening. We're going to look through that again today. It is going to be so exciting. Praise God. Hallelujah. It is going to be awesome. So thank, thank you, you to our friends and partners for supporting, standing with us. Mm -hmm. Stand, hallelujah. Many of you watch the program. I pray that you would consider. Go to our website, GabrielHamans.com. And go visit our website. Look at our ministry. Look at the broadcast. We have, I don't know, five, six hundred videos that we have on YouTube, on our website. It is everywhere. Hallelujah. And of course, everything we do is always live. It's on our website, GabrielHamans.com. It's here on YouTube. It goes on YouTube. It's here on Facebook, of course, live. And it will be on YouTube immediately after the broadcast. Yes. Did right. I get that right? You right. did beautifully. Yes. Help me there. You did so great. Much. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. So what we want to do is as we thank our partners, then real quickly, we're coming to Huntsville, Alabama, Madison, Madison, Alabama, Madison, mm -hmm. Alabama. Yes. Hallelujah. We're coming to do a meeting. Praise God. Revival. Fire revival. At Madison <laughs> Victory. No. <laughs> Madison Worship Center with Worship Pastor Center. Rita. Rita Wiggins. Wiggins. Yes. Pastor Rita Wiggins. I forgot your name, your last name last week. I won't do it again. Pastor mm -hmm. Rita Wiggins. And we are coming, glory to God, to be there Friday, September, this month. The 22nd, Saturday, September 23rd, Sunday, September 24th. These three dates are absolutely going to be life-changing. Glory. Do yes. not miss one minute of it. I'm telling you, the Spirit of God is going to fall. We're he, gonna, is. Uh, yes. he is. talking to me about what he's going to do. Yes. It is absolutely amazing. We're not just trying to build up a meeting here. If you can get there, <laughs> get there. If you cannot get there, be there anyway. <laughs> Friday, September 22nd of this month, three, three weeks away. Yes. Okay. Saturday, September 23rd. And Sunday morning and evening, 24th. After that, we don't know what we do. Only God knows. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> but we will be doing so. <laughs> Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. God, yes. And so we are going to travel. Just to tell you this, we travel. This meeting is so important. It was last year. We went to Phoenix. Uh, also September 22nd was on a Thursday that the Lord said, go and release. Open the fire season. Yes. Release it in the yes. spirit. Release it. Mm -hmm. And we did that. Yes. And of course, when we travel like that, we don't travel a lot at the moment. We travel with our whole team, all five of them. What I want you to do is... Um, We'll play a little musical chairs. I just want you to uh, to see our team real quickly. And we will be in Huntsville, of course, uh, September 21st. We, we, we're coming into town. And so we have um, my wife, of course, Apostle Shelley. And then we have Pastor Tim. And if you just okay. swap, swap seats. And Pastor Tim Whitmore. This is the dear, dear friend of mine. Yes. Precious, precious man in my life. God, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What an amazing friend, man, come associate, on. helper, come on, co-minister. It's like it's like we're it's like we're hooked by the yeah. hip. It's amazing how come the Lord on. has joined us together. Of course, we've had has the term on the program before. Sadly, so I've not had him back, but I want to I want to talk about some things. And we're going to get to it. Hallelujah! Yes. It's this time is flying by so fast. So. Just go ahead and say hello to everybody. Man, hello, everybody out there, all the remnant and people who may just be catching the show for the first time, uh, the broadcast. What I want to say is, man, the 22nd of this month is going to be September. amazing. Or, uh, September, the expectation in our spirits, 
not our minds. Now, we're expecting in our minds. We're, we're excited about it in our minds. But in the, our spirit, man, Holy Spirit is just building an expectation of what he's going to do. And when you begin seeing all these timelines converge, man, we're just, it's going to be a smoking meeting, no pun intended, but it's going to be a fire meeting, glory to God. And I always say everything's smoking, but this time, I'm telling you, last year I got hit with the fire just a little bit, but this year, if you can come, man, join us. All of us are excited. We're excited to come down and be face to face with the people and meet folks and see what Holy Spirit is going to do through the apostles, through the preaching, and what he has planned from before the foundation of the earth for this night, his 44th anniversary of meeting Holy Spirit. Yeah. Wow. I'm excited, sir. Yeah, and I'm going to say a lot about that. <laughs> oh, glory, glory. Oh, love you, sir. Pastor Tim, I, I love you. Thank you. And so awesome to have your people part of our lives in this ministry. It's so exciting. And, it's an uh, honor to be part of what you're all doing it, with Holy Spirit and the Lord. And it, it's an honor for us. Our team is so small, but like giants. Powerful, blessed, amazing. Hallelujah. Oh. Pastor Tim, thank you, my friend. My Pastor Deb. I don't, I don't think the people have seen you before. Come sit here a second. This hey, is Pastor Lord. Deb Whitmore and Pastor Tim's <laughs> wife. And they are a powerful ministry team, praise God, being in the things in the, in the, in the, in the Word and the works of the Lord many, many years. Oh Hallelujah. And their life is one miracle. This, this last five, six years, you look at it, it's just like, yes. one, one, it's like one great miracle. Yeah. So you'll get to see everybody just quickly today. We did a little musical yeah. chairs. Yeah. And, of course, we will be in Madison and in Huntsville on the 21st and at least through the weekend. We don't know what happens after the weekend. We don't know, have no clue, but go ahead and just say hello and whatever's on your mind and just greet people. And praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, welcome, everyone. Just so excited to be on the broadcast for this brief little moment and say hello. Just so excited about these meetings coming up. you just got to get there. Holy Spirit is just going to move. We're just We're ramped up. We're stoked. Yeah. And it's just going to be so awesome. So awesome. Just so excited and just like we know the Lord is just going to be... Moving mightily <laughs> through this major ministry. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> See, in these people are so amazing. They start talking about the Lord. The power of God just starts Ooh. coming on them. I mean, it is, Glory anyway, to God. we drive in the car sometimes or we sit in the restaurant. I mean, you, this, you don't want to go with us to a restaurant because <laughs> we all sit there shaking and laughing in the spirit or crying. And people think, what is wrong with those people? But this is what happens. It's real. It's real. You, you see, you see, the ministry cannot be real. If what you have with God personally is not real, oh my God. even though ministry is different from your personal relationship with the Lord, your connection and, mm. and, 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 and relationship with God's Holy Spirit oh has got to be real. Oh and you see the people sit down here, it is, it's, they sit down for one minute, you just see the, the light of God in their face and they start talking and see the power of God start coming. Mm. It's, it's real. We live this 24 oh seven. And, uh, we could not be more blessed on behalf of my wife and myself to have them as associate ministers. Pastors Tim and Deb Whitmore. We we'll love you. Thank you so much. Love you so much. You much guys are awesome. It. Thank Thanks you so God. much. And then um, I want to welcome Gigi. This is our executive lady. She is our officer of administration. Executive Administrator. I'm even learning terminologies. <laughs> Hallelujah. Between my wife and them, everything gets done on paper, phones, computers, everything. Everything goes on the air. <laughs> That's my part. Hallelujah. For now. So, um, we thank the Lord and, and the Lord brought Gigi to us. You know, time has flown. How long is it now? You know, it's, uh, three years. Seven? Three, almost well, three. Well, two. Two ministry, yeah. Yeah. Ministry too. And, and, but it feels like you've been here 30 years part of the ministry. Yeah. And it's God just supernaturally. God, of course, the Lord supernaturally connected me with Pastor Tim back in 1998. And, and then, of course, when their lives came together, the Lord just supernaturally added them to us, to Pastor, the Apostle Shelley and myself. And the same with, with, with Gigi. And her part is as big as everybody's part in this ministry. But this is the first time people get to see you. They just always hear you work. So... Take a minute and just greet people, talk to them a little bit. I want to say to everybody, it's such an honor to be here, to be part of your day and your afternoon. 
and I am so overwhelmed by what God has been doing in the time that I've been involved with this ministry, but also watching it previous to being joined with the ministry. I have experienced things that I have never experienced in my life. The growth in the spirit has been exponential. And just the last three years of what they've poured into the remnant and to all of us through the books, through the broadcasts, through the weekly insights, through the spotlights, everything that they do is from the spirit of the Lord. And I had the experience in Phoenix to be touched while I was working the camera, while we were recording, the fire hit me and I was down on the ground and that was it. And it was an indescribable experience. So I cannot encourage you enough to find a way, no matter what, how, get yourself to Madison, Alabama, because it will literally yeah. change your yes. life. Come on. You need to be there with us. And we are just so excited Whatever God's going to do, God. we're excited. So glory to God. Thank you so much. And I honor both Hallelujah. you, Apostle Gabriel, and Apostle Shelley, and Amen. the pastors as well. I tell you, we have the best team in the world, don't we? Amen. Come on. Thank Amen. you, Ms. Yes. Gigi. And I want to say this, you know, there's so much work that happens behind the scenes that you don't, don't know. There's so much sometimes stuff that Pastor Depp would put together. So many things my wife would do. So many things Gigi would do. But, you know, the spotlight that is posted every Tuesday... On YouTube at, at noon. And then, of course, the E-Truth newsletter every Wednesday yes. that is posted. You know, we have to really and want to give credit and honor Gigi in that. Yes. She puts all those together. The soundtrack, everything, and, you know, the the E-Newsletter, we just give it to her. She lays it out. She designs it, have all of that done. And it's just an amazing work. And there's so much more that she does. So much more than anybody else does. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to begin to move forward here into what the Lord wants to talk with us about. I, I, I want my wife to just be sensitive and be ready anytime if the Lord moves you here towards the front and uh, this, this step right up here. The chair is here and praise God. It is an honor for us and it's an honor for my wife and myself to introduce to you these amazing people that God is continually continually changing and molding into amazing remnant people for him in these last days. There is a wisdom God wants you to catch today. We're talking about signs and wonders and of these last days and so on. There is a wisdom and most of this has to do with time. And Holy Spirit Help me, thank you, Lord. We're going to be able to simplify this and go through this easy. Psalms 90, verse 10. Psalms 90, verse 10. A day shall be as a thousand years. A thousand years shall be as a day. So God uses the little model, the microcosm, to create this cosmos that was in ruin after Lucifer had had it before. Then God fixed it up. And six days, he refurbished the whole earth with a brand new cosmos, a brand new creation. On the seventh day, he rested. Then he says, a day is as a thousand years, a thousand years is as a day. That's very simple. Seven days it took from beginning to the end to establish this cosmos on the earth. It will endure. It will expire. In 7,000 years. It's so simple. From Adam to Abraham. Was a total of 2,000 years. So that's two days. Day one, day two. From Abraham till Christ. Two more days. Or two more thousand years. So 4,000 years. From Adam to Abraham two. Then 2,000 more till Christ. Then of course the Lord came to this wonderful earth, redeemed us, went back to the Father. And then Hosea says, in Hosea chapter 6, verse 1, he talks about how the Lord has punished us, how the Lord has, has uh, uh, punished us for our sins. But he said, but then it says he will heal us, he will restore us, he will, he will rejuvenate us, he, he will restore us and, and, and raise us up. And it's talking about the redemption. It's talking about the Christ. So the time will come that Christ would come to the earth back then, 
in Christ which redeem us. Then after Christ has redeemed us and has returned to him. Then he says, after two days. A day as a thousand years. So from the time that Christ came to the earth, the beginning of day five. Adam to Abraham, day one, two. Abraham to Christ, day three, day four. Jesus, beginning of day five. All right. Then day six. And in the year 2000, we came to the end of the sixth day. So far, we've had 23 years of overtime or time out. That the Lord is playing around with the time a little bit for you things he needs to do. So even if you understand that, you're real close just to begin with right there. Hallelujah. Now, there are certain cycles or sequences of numbers that God uses. In the final chapter of this book, God's Golden Glory Revolution, I give you a list of all the time cycles and see, you don't have to know all that. It's just nice to have, good to have, wonderful to have. The Lord said to me, do it. It's got to be done. Nobody's ever put them all together. So he said, put them all together. I said, okay, Lord, we'll do it. But I want to touch on a few of these time cycles that have determined everything during time and through time and as we have progressed through time, from the beginning of time, and it explains to us where we are today in time and in the plan of God and why and how we got here. Okay. All right? So, 6,000 years. Now, I want to take you back. Adam to Abraham, 2,000 years. Then, of course, two more thousand years to Christ. That's 4,000 years. Let's go back. Let's go back to just around about 3,000 years. Let's go back to a thousand before Christ. That would be the end of the third day, right? Right? Yes. Yes. Day one, day two, day three. Yes. Adam to Abraham, day one, day two. Abraham to Christ, day three, day four. Day four. All right. So, Jesus came at the end of 4,000 years. Let's go back a thousand years from there. Yes. So, we go 3,000 years. Adam, 3,000 years. Adam to Abraham, 2,000, 3,000. All right, is that good? Yes. Round about 3,000. Yep. So round about the end of day three. So then we slip back just a little bit. And so we're at now at 1,000 B.C. Okay? Yes. It was one more thousand and Jesus will come. Yes. So, so let's go back to 1,000 B.C. And then slip back 96 years. Yes. The number is not important. But what is important for you to know is that Israel was living under the law and had to obey and live according to all the laws that God was giving to her to obey and observe through Judaism and how to worship the Lord and the whole sacrifice and temple system, all of it together. One of those laws I want to mention to you now, which is very important. It's called the sabbatical law of the land. It's very simple. Here it is. God said to Israel for six years. Can you count to six? One, two, three, four, five, six. For six years in a row, every year, you may tilt the ground, you may sow, you may plant, you may use the soil, you may sow your seed, you may reap your harvest. Six years in a row, you may work the soil and reap your harvest. But the seventh year, year number seven, you must not touch the ground, let it rest for that whole season, that whole year. Very simple. So six years. You're going to plant the vineyards and the fields and everything and reap your crops. But the seventh year, you leave it alone. Every seventh year, work six years, the seventh year, the land must, must rest. Work six years, the seventh year, the land must rest. Work six years, the seventh year, the land must rest. Okay, now, from the time that Saul became king, which is the year 1096 B.C., until the time that King Nebuchadnezzar uh, invaded Jerusalem and the Babylonian captivity began. How long a period was that? From 1096 to 606. It was exactly 490 years. 490 years. What was it? It was really 70 cycles of 7 years. It was 70 cycles of seven, of, of, of seven years. And every seventh year, they were supposed to let the land rest. And they did it. So God spoke to Jeremiah. Listen, it's so simple. He said, I'm going to punish Israel. Because 
she has abandoned and rebelled, abandoned against and, and rebelled against the sabbatical law of the land. So for 490 years, which is 70 times 7 years, they did not observe the law. They never gave the, the, the land the rest. So the Lord said, now I'm going to uh, allow the king of Babylon to come and take you into captivity for 70 years. Why 70 years? Because every seventh year that the land did not rest, if you add those up every seventh year, it's exactly 70 years. So they're going to pay for every year that one out of seven, that they did not allow the sabbatical law of the land to operate, they're going to pay for every year they violated, which was every seventh year, every sabbatical year. That's simple, isn't it? Yes. 70 years from 606 B.C. till 536 B.C., 70 years. However, however, if, and we've done it before, you look at the book of Daniel, chapter 9. In the first year of the year of King Ahasuerus, Daniel says, it's like, it's like understanding came. He, he said, I read the words of Jeremiah the prophet, prophesying that Israel would be in captivity in Babylon for 70 years. Now, this is the 68th year of the captivity. This is Daniel chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Very simple, you can read that. Daniel chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. It's like, he woke up. He said, oh my God. We have thus endured 68 years of captivity here in Babylon. And according to Jeremiah the prophet, there's two more years to come. But then he's looking at the prophet. Daniel is looking at how Israel are living in sin and not obeying God and not doing anything right. And he began to, uh, a spirit, a, a heaviness and, and prayer hit him, you know. And he began to weep before the Lord and began to pray for two years. And literally begging the Lord, Lord, please do not let this captivity be extended. Please let it come to an end in two years and let Israel be able to return to the land. Long story short, it did come to pass two years later, 536 BC, in the 70th year of the captivity, King Cyrus, the Persian, released the Jews. You can go back. The problem is only a small contingent of about 50,000 people went back. There's three to four million Jews in the land that's supposed to go home, but they're not. And then uh, almost 50, 50 some years later, um, another group went back with Ezra. But then the Lord said to Daniel, I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you a secret. I'm going, to, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to talk to you about Israel and my times and my plans for Israel. So, so the Lord says to Daniel, okay, let me show you this. I have determined and I've set aside almost a block of time. I have set aside a specific block or amount of time. And within this time period, my whole plan with Israel will run its course to the very end. So, very simple. We've read that before. Daniel 9, 24 through 27. I'm just going to quote on it now. Daniel 9, 24 through 27. As a result of Daniel's weeping and wailing and crying before the Lord for two years, the Lord said, okay, I'll give you the secret. He said, concerning you and your people and Jerusalem, I have set aside a cycle of 70 times 7. Isn't it amazing? The same time period that they violated the sabbatical law. From the time King Saul became king, 1096 BC till 606 BC. That was exactly 70 times 7 years, 490 years. So, so the Lord says, I'm coming up now with a new block. A 430 year block. 90, excuse me, 490 year block. This is going to expire. This time is for you and your people and for Jerusalem. And by the end of this time, I will make an end of sin, an end of all transgression. I will bring in everlasting righteousness and holiness forever. 
and Israel will be saved. Hallelujah. At the end of this 490 years of time. So then the Lord gave Daniel the secret. He says, from the time that the commandment, the decree is issued to rebuild Jerusalem. From the time this decree is issued until the Messiah will come and manifest himself and then die for the people. Will be seven and sixty two, will be sixty nine times seven years. So, four hundred and eighty three years, sixty nine of the seventy year cycles of seven years will transpire from the time the commandment is given to go back and rebuild Jerusalem, not the temple, Jerusalem, and until the commandment is given and the Messiah is revealed and dies for the people. So that's 483 years. And we've talked about this before. This is important. This is important. Remember the day when Jesus, in Luke chapter 19, when he rode on the donkey into Jerusalem, and the Pharisees try to quiet him down, and the people are celebrating, and they're, they're crowning him, and they're worshiping him, and they're, they're pouring uh, their clothes and palm branches in front of the donkey, and they're celebrating, and, and, and the Pharisees try to get Jesus to quiet down the disciples. He said, if they do not do this today, the rocks will cry. Why? Because that was the coronation of the king. Jesus had been coming in and out of Jerusalem all the time while he's on the earth, preaching, coming and going. That day, though, was a special day. What did he say to them? On that day, he said, how I wanted to gather you and save you and help you, but you would not. And therefore, you will be destroyed. Why? Because he didn't obey, he didn't repent, he didn't do this or that. No, because you didn't know your time of visitation. What was the time of visitation? It was that day. What day was that day? It was Sunday, April the 6th of the year 32. What day was that, Gabriel? It was the last day of the 483 years. The prophecy says 7 plus 62 cycles of 7 years. That's 69 times 7 years. That's 483 years in the Hebrew calendar as they were living, living by the old uh, Hebrew calendar was exactly 173,880 days. But what was important, because you see with Israel, they were always very meticulous about observing, studying every law, interpreting everything, doing everything right. You see, but if you do not follow the time signals of God, if you don't, if you don't look at God's traffic lights, you're going to crash. Ooh, come on. And these lights, they are like traffic lights on the road to destiny. And right now the church is not looking at the traffic lights. Not at all. Yeah. In actual fact, the church even travels in the wrong lane. In this religious Christianity, instead of walking with Holy Spirit, they're even in the wrong lane. Some of them even going backwards. It's a mess. But from Israel, we learn something here, which is so important. It's so incredible. What did Jesus say on Luke 19.44? Luke chapter 19, verse 44. Oh my, if you had only but known this day, But you will be destroyed because you did not know your time of visitation. What time? The prophecy of Daniel. The end of 69 cycles of seven years. 483. 173,880. The day that Jesus rode on that donkey into Jerusalem was the last day of the prophecy. Just like Daniel prophesied. After 7 and 62, at the end of 69 times 7 years, Messiah will be revealed and then he will be cut off, not for himself, but for the people. So on that day, we talked about this before. Remember, every prophetic event has its own time clock. And so time continued to, 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 to run. The other prophetic things that were running, like the prophecy of Ezekiel when Israel would be reborn. We talked about that. No, come on. I want to go back there now again. All of those continue. But on this particular prophecy, that day that Jesus fulfilled it, on the last day of the 69 times seven years, he was crowned in the heavens and on the earth as the King of kings and Lord of lords. And this caused the time clock on that prophecy to be paused. The Lord pushed the pause button 
on the last day of the 69 times 7 years. Why? Because if he hadn't paused it, the next day would have been the first day of the final 7 years. What are the final 7 years? They are years of tribulation. Daniel tells you that. Daniel 9, 27, the end of that prophecy. 24, 25, 26, 27. The last is 7 years of tribulation. So that whole prophecy got frozen, got paused. And so then Holy Spirit is poured out after Jesus left the earth. The church went through the first hundred years, got to the time where she sold out to the Antichrist spirit. And by the time uh, the last apostle died, the church had become a religious organization that would develop into a religious political uh, a dynasty of the devil. is a, a, a most ungodly, uh, demonic, Roman Catholic, demon-controlled, Satan-controlled, religion of Christianity. But time, so time goes by. So we went through the fifth day and now we're in the sixth day. Now we get to the 1500s and then something amazing happened on Saturday, October 31st of the year 1517, 1517. God raised up a man by the name of Martin Luther and he says, and I'm going to use my own uh, expression, to hell with this, to hell with y'all. You You're preaching a gospel that is untrue. You're hiding the Bible from people. It's only available to us in the monasteries. You're preaching what is not true. You have ceremonies and sacrifices and things to make yourself feel good and do. You think you can forgive sins. You play God. You think you're Jesus. I'm going to preach the gospel. The just shall live by faith. Return to the Bible. Jesus died for you. Jesus redeemed you. Jesus delivered you. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is salvation. You don't want to sit and talk to a priest and tell him your sins and then he forgives you your sins. No, it is by faith in Jesus Christ. You must be born again. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and then you must accept him as Lord and Savior by faith and receive him as your Lord and give your life to him and accept and receive his salvation. Thank God and a long season of the restoration of the church began right there and was launched. Now, fast forward to 1991 quickly. Sitting at my desk, 1991. And the Lord starts talking to me. And he said, he said, um, you know, you understand Daniel's 70 week prophecy. And he talked about that for a little bit. Yes, yes. One is left, the final, the final seven years. But that'll come after the church is taken. Because then the church age came. We've gone 2,000 years. Now it's going to come the last end time harvest. Jesus will come and receive the whole harvest of the whole church. And then there's seven years of tribulation. Then Jesus comes back and we're with him for the battle of Armageddon. All the devils and demons are put in the, in the pit. Then Jesus reigns and we reign with him a thousand years. Then the devil is led out of the pit. One more time, one final rebellion and it's over. And we stand before the great white throne judgment. All final judgments are passed on, passed out. Old heaven. And the old earth are burned up, new heaven, new earth, and we start eternity. It's really simple, isn't it? Come on. But, so the Lord said to me, I have given the church also a 70-week prophecy. I said, oh, oh. I said, you have to say, yeah. So what is he saying to me? The Lord was saying to me, as I took a 490-year, 490-year season, and put Israel's whole end time plan in that 490 years. I have, for these last days, this is the church age now, I have reserved an end time plan for the church. That's also a 70 week prophecy, 490 years long. I sat at my desk, I said, oh my God. Are you serious? He said, yeah. So I said, well, I know when it started. Because the church began to change. The Reformation was the beginning of it. That was the start where the church began to be, be restored, be revived. That was the beginning. Until then, it was this hell and death. So I called a friend of mine who was a teacher. I said, get me this date. Of course, this was long before internet and stuff. She called me back a little later and said, it was Saturday, October the 31st, 1517. 1517. And I said, then I had one of these big old green calculators on my desk and I went, and I went 1517 plus 490 and I 
jumped out at me. 2007. I said, oh my God, there it is. There it is. 2007. That's it. The rapture. 2007. 2007. 2007. Now, let's go back to the year 1900. 123 years ago. Suddenly in 1900, like it was with the early church in Jerusalem and those first generation of the early church and the Gentiles and so on and the ministry of Paul, God would pour out His Spirit all the time. And so in 1900, again, after almost 2,000 years, suddenly God began to pour out His Spirit again. And revivals began to start everywhere. Not just revivals of salvation. God pouring out His Spirit. People coming under the power of the Spirit. People laying on the floor, burning in the fire, rolling in, the, in laughter and joy. People have trances and visions. People see supernatural things. People experience God. Some people go to heaven. God started to pour out His Spirit again in 1900. Now we've got to look at the times. It's very important. That's a hundred years before the end of day six. Adam to Abraham. Day one, day two. Abraham to Christ, day three, day four. After Christ, day five, day six. Day six, ending in 2000 AD. So I say, whoa, and then we've got to look at all this now. Hallelujah. And then, of course, the Lord came to me as a young pastor. And this was a Sunday, October 19, 1986. Did you know 1986? October 19th was a Sunday. It was. That afternoon, the Lord visited me supernaturally. We've talked about it many times before. And the Lord showed me. He came to me and he said, Son, I want to show you. There are two global revivals coming to the earth before Jesus returns. Today, I'm going to show you and tell you about the first one. It is an outpouring of laughter and joy and freedom in the house of God. This revival will endure for a while. Then it will dissipate and disappear. Then there will be a long dry season the church will go through. And then there will come an outpouring of the great glory of God from heaven. He said, I will tell you about that second revival, the last one, at another time. But this was Sunday, October 19, 1986. Let me show you about the first one. And you see, as the Lord got to the end of telling me this, I, I, said, I said, Lord, I could hardly speak. But then the Lord gave me this question. So I asked him the question he had given me. I said, time with you and time with us are two different things. When is this supposed to start? This joy revival that you're showing me today, when is this supposed to start? He said, in one year's time. So he's using a biblical expression, in one year's time. That was Sunday, October 19, 1986. So now one year has to transpire. Then you get to Monday, October 19, 1987, and then the next day, Tuesday, October 20th, 1987, would be officially then the first day of this new season. Now, you say, well, did the Holy Spirit start to fall on the first Tuesday? No, He did not. Just like with hurricanes, you know, June 1st is when hurricane season opened, but we don't have them until August, September, October sometimes. But the Lord said to me, this is the season. Now, what I did not know and what I hadn't known back then was that in 1900, God poured out the Spirit. 1904 was a great revival in Wales. 1906, I knew some about this, the great Azusa Street revival. But what I did not know at all was that the outpouring of the Spirit went global in 1907. And what I didn't know either, and I learned that day and, and after the Lord had talked to me and visited me, in the next few months, I began to study all this. And I found this out, that every 20 years from 1907, God brought a fresh outpouring of His Spirit to the world. And it usually started here in America. 1927, 1907, 1927, 1947, 1967, 1987. So when the Lord came to me in 86, Sunday, October 19, I didn't know these things. So I asked him, when will this begin? He said, in one year's time. And then after that, I began to look into history and I began to study and I learned all these things. I said, oh my God. Oh my God. This revival of 87 is the last 20 year cycle. It's going to take us to 97 and 2007 in the rapture. Now, that was exactly what would have happened. That was God's original plan 
to give the church and continue an uninterrupted, very simple, an uninterrupted 70 week period, an uninterrupted 490 year period from 1517 to 2007. Very simple, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I say very simple, isn't yes. it? Yes. So now, 1987, the revival started. The Lord said to me, go to America. Hallelujah. Tell them about the joy of the Bible. I said, go tell them the joy of the Lord is going to fall everywhere. And I came here. The first people looked at me real funny. But very soon, the Spirit of God started to fall. Little meetings, like 10, 12, 15 people that day on the floor, laugh for hours, and it began to pick up more and more and more. And then it came to pass. I wish it had come to stay. <laughs> come on. And it did stay for quite a long time. But in the end, it passed. God, listen very carefully, God had fully intended that the 1987 revival would have concluded in 2007 with the rapture of the church at the end of the 490 year cycle, 70 weeks of the church, 70 weeks of the church, 15, 17 the 2007. And everything was hunky-dory. And God has been poured out everywhere. God's taken me to seven, seven different nations. 32, 33, 34 states of this country. 91, 92, more. 93 exploded. 94, 95, 96, 97. Meeting after meeting. Four, four five, six hundred meetings per year. I mean, by the time we got to 97, 98, we had several thousand meetings. Just less than a decade. Morning, noon, and night, outpouring everywhere. Every church I went, 56 churches in seven different nations, 33, 34 states of the United States. Every church I went into, no matter how many de devils or demons were there, no matter how thick the demons were in the place, Holy Ghost would fall, the joy would hit, the revival would go on for weeks. Sometimes we didn't have enough time and to go to the next place. And just every place outpouring, it came to pass. I did not make it up. I didn't lie. And many of you today that are still watching, you were in those meetings. All over this country were in my meetings. Brother Rodney Howard Brown's meetings, Dr. Hagen's meetings, others. We all started to run with this outpouring of God. Why? Because the Lord brought a new outpouring of the Spirit to the church of joy, laughter, freedom, and, 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 and the strength of God in the house. Hallelujah. Why? To prepare us, to refresh us, to revive us, to heal us, to raise us up, put us back on our feet, but also to prepare, to begin to prepare us for the last hurrah, the great final last day outpouring of the Spirit on all flesh. Hallelujah. Now, 1997, real quickly, those of you who have this book, please read this tonight and don't take long. Just pages 265 and 266. Pages 265, 266. I'm going to quickly just summarize it here. 1997, the Lord came to me and said, My son, I'm sorry, but the plan has changed. I said, Why? He said, The church changed it. He said, The church, as you can see now, in many factions of the church, are moving away from the joy. They don't want us to come back, and other people that are running with the joy, a revival. And the Lord said to me, The church is going to cause a default here. He said, so nothing is going to happen for a while. The revival is going to continue to deteriorate. And it just slowly dwindled away more and more and more and more and more. Then we got to the year 2000. Did everybody say 2000? 2000. Okay. What is interesting about that? That's the end of the sixth day. A day being as a thousand years. Also, if you look at the 70 week prophecy of the church, the year 2000 brought us to the end of 69 of the 70 weeks of 70 times 7 years. So finally, the year 2000, we are at the end of 69 weeks of the 70 week prophecy. Israel has been there since April 6, 32. Amazing. Come on. It's amazing. So what's happening now? 
But now understand, Israel was reborn as a nation in 1948. That's the beginning of the last generation. The church, it started the year before, May 1947. A huge revival. The biggest ever hit this country. And it went all over the world. And it's the beginning of what you can clearly see, the birth of the last generation of the church. Yes. We've got to talk about these things. We've got to talk, we've got to know about these things. Very simple. Children can know. They need to know. They must know. So in 2000. In seven, the church turned 60 years old, but the rapture didn't take place. 2017, the church came of age of a full generation, 70 years, yes. 1947 to 2017. I saw something else this before I walk in the office today, my wife, that I had not noticed before. 1997. The church began to attack the joy revival and began to decline. Mm -hmm. And revivals continued. We had some revivals even into 2000. Even uh, the last big one that we had, well, uh, 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 Sacramento, California, and um, um, Corona, California. Yeah. In, 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 in 2009, 2010, God still gave us two revivals after to what everything else was gone. But from 1997, everything was on a decline. And when the Lord graciously put Sally and I together, we got married on Saturday, October 22nd, 2011. A new birthing period began for the church. So from 1997, God still moved, still outpourings. We still had revivals up to 2010 in Sacramento. But nothing new happened in the church. No new outpouring. Nothing new. Until 2011. When we got married, the Lord started the birthing process of the end time handbook, revelation, knowledge, all of this. Okay, okay. So, so, so from 1997, when the decline began, until new birthing was 14 years. Oh. Come on. Oh. I only saw that in the office. I was in the bedroom going through my notes. 14 wow. years from the time the revival began to decline in 97. Oh my God. Down, 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 down. Until 2011 when you and I got married and the Lord started the birthing. Jeez. These books, all these books were wrote. God started to birth us in our spirit for hour after hour after hour. God said in 2017, early 2017, the Lord said to my wife, Tell him, tell me, sit down, sit down with Holy Spirit. We need to write the handbook, the handbook, the end time manual of the last day golden glory revolution, the whole end time revival, everything. God's golden glory revolution. And I tell you what, finally, talk about 14, July 14, Friday, Friday, July 14, 2017, I sat down and said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? He said, we are going to. Give the whole prophetic. Just give me the old book up there, will you, Pastor? Too. We are going to. Um, well, we're going to redo the Golden Glory. This was the first Golden Glory book that we published in '96. We talked about this. Why did you write this book? I didn't want to write books. Everybody wanted to write books. Everybody wanted to be anybody in the church. I'm sorry, you wanted to write books. So when the Lord said to me, "I want you to write a book," I said, "Thank you, no, I'm not interested." You know, all these people want to write books and they come to your conference. And, I want you to give you my new book and everything. I said, I don't have time for that. Besides, I preach twice every day of my life, except on Saturdays. In between, I fly on planes, I drive, I sleep a little bit here, I laugh, I'm drunk in the spirit, I'm in the pulpit for hours every day, morning and night. When have I got to write a book? He said, you're going to take time off and write this book. And then I had the experience on Tuesday morning, August the 17th, 1993, in Spindle, North Carolina, when the Lord took me and showed me a replica of the old temple of Solomon, the Holy of Holies, the gold and the glory. And I took off there in a trance. I was in a trance. Mm. And for over an hour, I preached on it. A few years later, the Lord said to me, you got to write a golden glory book. I have a golden glory plan for these last days. He said, it'll be a prophecy that will prophesy what would come. And this was published in um, 1996, talk about 14. I received the first copy, June 14 of 1996, the first book. So the Lord said, we got to sit down and do this one. 400 pages, 2017. 
Now, now, from 1997 to 2011, 14 years, nothing new. 2011 to 17, six years of God birthing these books, these end time books, outpouring the fire, the golden glory, the whole end time revolution. What is true Christianity? The amazing books. It's never been anything written like this on the face of the earth. True Christi Christian living. How do you do it? God had birthed these books in our life spirit. Then he downloaded them here and they came out. Hallelujah. And so when we're working this book, the Lord said to me, son, not many people will read the book. I said, Lord, it's going to be like almost 400 pages. He said, yeah, it will be. But we put everything in here that God said. And still it was not everything. After that, the Lord said, now you're going to tell them what true Christianity is. And how to get out of false Christianity, how to live the true Christian life with Holy Spirit. And you've got to start preparing people for the global outpouring of God's fire, which is coming. That's all that we've been doing. Hallelujah. So 2011 to 17, the birthing. Six years. 2017 to 2023, the manifestation. First of all, three years for the publication of the Golden Glory book. 2017 to 2020. May 22nd, 2020, we published this book. Three years. God gave us three years. Three years to raise up a remnant. From the time that this was published, on Friday, May 22nd, 2020, He gave us three years. From Friday, May 22nd, 2020, when this book was published, until this year, May 22nd, 2023, three years, just like, and the Lord took us back to Paul when he was in Ephesus and he called for the elders and he said, I've had this three years, this special three years God had given me. I've given you everything. I've taught you everything. Watch out. Wolves will come in among the sheep, but protect the church in Ephesus. But I've given you all God has given me for three years, for three years. By the Spirit of God and through this broadcast with us traveling some, we had Holy Spirit and allowed him to download the whole remnant, of course, we never even got to teach on the whole book. There is so much. But every week as we sit here, this is the lifeline. There's no other ministry anywhere on the face of the earth doing it. Not because we better. This is our job. This is what we call to do. This is so essential. I'm so glad you're watching this. I pray that you get these books. Hallelujah. I pray that God set you on fire. The fire of God is coming. It's close, 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 close. So this is where we are. We are in 2023, last year. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. We got a lot out so far today. We're almost there. The Lord said to me, you've got to go. Like when he sent, sent me to America in 88. Nobody knows me. I did not have no contacts, nowhere to preach. He said, go to America and go and declare. He said, everywhere you go, every door that opens, go in and say, thus says the Lord. The time for a new outpouring of the Spirit of God is here. I will now pour out my Spirit on you. Upon you with joy and laughter, freedom and strength in the house of God. And it turned into a global revival. Amen. That God gave me a great part of that. I said seven different nations, 32, 33 different states. Hallelujah. A whole period altogether, about 15, 15 plus years all in all. Hallelujah. Now we're here. 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 75 years why did Jesus condemn Jerusalem that day on the donkey during his official coronation as the king of the Jews as he's riding on that cult into the city of Jerusalem because you did not know your time of visitation which was that day Israel the last day of the 69 of the 70 weeks of Daniel you did not know your time of visitation and so, therefore, you'll be destroyed. But our time of visitation is before us now. Yes. And it's not a time of destruction. This is the greatest season. Paul calls this the climax of the ages. Next, oh. effect, next week, I'm going to talk to you about the restoration of all things. Now, this series of meetings we're doing, we actually started a new series of meetings. Let me just go back to this, and I'll close with this. We'll wrap this all together here. Hallelujah. On Pastor Tim's birthday, July the 2nd, Sunday, July the 2nd, we started a new series. I just used the subtitle of this book, Dare to Believe, and called this the Dare to Believe series. Had a different title every week. Hallelujah. Today's one is turning a little differently. 
It's times and seasons, whatever you want to call it. It's times and seasons and moments of appointments. Times and seasons and moments of appointments. Times and seasons and moments of appointments that we are standing right now. Here we are. Praise God. Hallelujah. We've come through all this time. We've come through 2007. Didn't, nothing happened. Nothing happened. And no new outpouring. From 97. From 97 till 17. It's everything. A 20 year cycle of just drought. Yes. From 11 to, 7, to, to 17. All this new stuff was, was birthed. God's end time plan, the handbook, the secret, the revelation through the ministry of Paul was birthed in this book that we're able to write down and record and then publish after three years from 2017 until 2020 when we finally published it. And then God gave us three years. That's all we had, three years. Last year, he said to us and worked out the date. And he said, go to Phoenix, go to this church and go and... Um, release the fire. Take the cap off. And we did that. Some of you watched those meetings. They were awesome. Some people were hit by the fire. It was awesome. Yes. But it doesn't mean because God says, pour the water in now that you'll drink it tomorrow. But it's going to reach you. And I was sitting here in this chair a month and a half or so ago. And suddenly the Lord said to me, September 22nd, and I was thinking about September 22nd last year when we did in Phoenix do the meetings. We released the fire season. We opened the fire season, declared it, hallelujah. An awesome time, amazing meeting, hallelujah. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you standing in the pulpit on September 22nd. And here's what you're going to preach. This is now this coming September 22nd. And I saw like September 22nd of 2022. And it was running like right into this year, September 22nd. 2023, like the two years ran into one, boom. And the Lord said, I want you standing in the pulpit. It's going to be a Friday. This Friday, September 22nd, 2023, in through what, three weeks' time, yeah. we will be standing. I will, by the grace of God, I will be standing in Madison, Alabama. Alabama. <laughs> I make sure I do the forest. I make sure I do the forest gum thing. Alabama is Madison Worship Center. Pastor Rita Wiggins and her people and everybody else is welcome. Do not miss a minute of these meetings. Hallelujah! Glory to God. The meetings are Friday night, September twenty second, seven o'clock. Saturday night, September 23rd, 6 o'clock in the evening. Sunday morning, September 24th, I think it's 10 o'clock in the morning, and 10 or 10.30 and then 6 in the evening. Madison Christian, I keep getting it right. Ma Madison Worship Center. I keep getting it. Madison Worship, I got in front of me, can't read it. Madison Worship Center. Forgive me, Pastor Rita. Madison Worship Center. God is going to do something. Do not miss it. Hallelujah. Can you see the time? Can you see the times of God? Can you see the seasons? Do you understand this? Is this simple enough? Can you see where we are? We're in the last generation since 47. The last generation of Israel since 48. We've been in the last 20 year cycle since 2007. We're 75 years into the end. This is what the Lord wanted me. Signs wanted. He said there'd be signs, fire, pillar, clouds, rain, hallelujah, thunder, lightning, any kind of thing you can think of. The time is coming soon that the Lord will just walk into churches. You look up and see him hover above the earth. And you think, oh my God, it's the rapture. And the next thing is gone. The signs and the ones. Even if you will just believe just the first one. It shall come to pass in the last days, says the prophet Joel. Repeated on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem on Sunday, June the 1st of the year 32. It shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all 
flesh. That means every human being. If you would just be prepared to believe just one sign and wonder of the future, of a future that is no longer a future that is just around the corner from us, the time is here. If you would believe, I talked a few weeks ago about faith that is active and working or passive or dormant faith. If you would positively put active faith, not just try to believe, put active faith in this and say, Lord, this is true. These things have come to pass. All this have come to pass. Israel was reborn as a nation. All of this have happened. The devil tried to wipe out the Jews, destroy them all, so that they could not be reborn as a nation. Because when they were reborn as a nation, Friday, May 14, 1948, it began the clock for the final 70 year generation to 80 years maximum. We're 75. We've, we've passed 75 years. We're right here close. We know God's going to manipulate the time and, 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 and play around with the time a little bit. But this is what you've got to see. You've got to see this. We are here. We are this close. This is the history. This is how we've come. And we are going. Hallelujah. We will be in Madison. Huntsville, Alabama, the weekend of September 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Madison Worship Center. Madison, Alabama. Hallelujah. That's it. If you don't get this, you don't get nothing. This is it. This is it. We don't prophesy. We haven't done what we've done. Put all these books together, everything, so that people would believe. No, no, that they would hear. When it comes to pass, you will see. All right, I said when I came to this country first, 1988, I said, get ready. There's a, a revival of joy about to hit you. What are you talking about? Where, where are you from? Are you crazy? The next thing, the Spirit of God starts falling everywhere. Every place we go, explode it. It's going to happen again. It's going to be the fire and the glory. It's going to start. It's going to be shocking. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome. This is the time. This is the season. This is the hour. These are the signs of the time. These are the end time signs of God. And they're about to be manifested. Fire and glory and the power of God. And the outpouring of the Spirit of God on every human being on the face of the earth. Are you ready? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Next week, I'm going to talk to you about amazing. The restoration of all the earth. Before Jesus returns, would you dare to believe? That's the series we're talking about. Dare, would you dare to believe? Would you dare to believe that Jesus is true, that Holy Spirit is true, that the time is true, the seasons are true, the signs are, are true, the wonders are true, the miracles are true, the times, the seasons, the years, the time, everything, the revivals that have come, they're all true. All of them are true. Every one of them is tr true and was true. And will be true. What is coming now. The signs and wonders and miracles. And outpouring of the spirit of God. On all flesh. Hallelujah. The fire of God is on the doorstep. Oh my God. My God. Share this with people. Hallelujah. Next week. Oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, oh my God. How am I going to get it down? The restoration of all things. Before Jesus comes back. Oh my God. Would you dare to believe? I'll show it to you. It's in the book of course. How I'll get into it next week. Oh my God. So next week we're going to talk about the restoration of all things. On the 17th, we're going to just simply talk about preparation for the fire meetings. And of course, on the 23rd, we will be in meetings. We won't have a broadcast. Hallelujah. People, let people know about this. Send it to people. Send it to pastors. Give them the, the link. Hook them up with this. And if you're anywhere near that you could get to be with us in Madison, Alabama, on the 22nd, 23rd, 24th of this month of September. Be there. Go to our website, GabrielHamans.com. We're advertising everything on social media, from Twitter to Facebook to uh, YouTube. It's everywhere. Everything is there. You can contact us. You can contact Pastor Rita Wiggins also in Madison and Huntsville. Glory to God. There's no problem. We're looking forward to see you. God is going to, I'm telling you, God is going to do something on the 22nd, 23rd, 24th. We don't know what's going to happen after it. As truly as I'm sitting here today, we will be changed people by the end of Sunday night, the 24th, and don't know where we are after that. Be, do not miss this.
Be part of this. Pray for us. Stand with us. It's a critical hour, but a glorious hour is now before us. Be with us. Walk with us. Stand with us. Covenant with us. Partner with us. Support us. Say, Lord, what can I do to help and support this ministry? It's like, you know, we're all traveling together. We believe in God for the budget. Just to cover this budget real quickly. Get that out of the way so we can go on and do what we need to do. You can give and sow into this ministry however God may lead you. I'm telling you, you talk about good soil. Oh, my God. This is some of the best soil ever because we're obeying God 100% fulfilling His prophetic purpose. We're running with and releasing His Spirit again in the outpouring of the fire. Be a part of it. Come and be a part of it. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. Thank you so very much for watching. We love you. We appreciate you. In Jesus' name. Thank you.